chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. Acts 2, 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were seated. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one had them speaking in his own la language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it, it, how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Patents, Medians, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Perigia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and part of Libya, near Syria. <coughs> Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in his own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and gracious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 22 to 27. Romans 8, 22 to 27. For we know that the whole creation grunts and labors with bad pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves grunt, with, grunt within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and the redemption of our bodies. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we hope, but the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us, granting which, which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches for the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us hear the gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ as it is written in John chapter 15, beginning at the 26th verse. Glory to you, Christ. When the Comforter comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who gives, who gives out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. 
so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. Now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the cons counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convince the world, convicts the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father. Where you can see me no longer. <clears throat> and in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands in condemnation. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring <clears throat> glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. And all that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. The Gospel of our Lord. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. And verse 31. Friends, before I unfold what the good Lord has laid upon my heart this Pentecost Sunday morning, chiefly for the candidates for confirmation from the parishes of St. Andrew's Lamen, Christ Church Serekunda, and St. Mary's Bandru, allow me to wish you all an ecclesiastical happy birthday. Today is the birthday of the Christian Church. Pentecost Day, the Sunday that the promised Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles, is regarded as the day the Christian Church was established. Most Christian churches 